Hey guys, welcome back to another video by Fully Informed Trade, or Fire Trade for short, knowledge for everyone. My name is Alex Cho, and today I'm just going to go ahead and analyze the market going into the weekend. Um, first of all, the Dow Jones Industrial Average has gone up a little bit today on the Friday session with a bit of a pullback. Again, I anticipate a bit of selling going towards the end of the session, mainly because of the huge gains longs have already made off of this market, and they're just going to have to close and try to close for a decent amount of profit. Now, let's talk about the recent Federal Reserve moves, and uh, you know, let's, let's go over exactly what happened. Well, Essentially, every central bank in the world has decided that they were going to bolster the European bank's balance sheet. So essentially, they're saying, even if you lose a lot of money from your bond position, we will still lend money to you so you can pay your depositors off regardless of however much money you lose from a European default case scenario. So what, the be the, what all these central banks have essentially positioned themselves to do is allow themselves to lend money in the case banks lose a lot of money. Well, when you work in the banking business, one thing you really have to understand is that these guys are offering loans to an institution that gives out loans so that when they lose money, they can pay back someone else for losses they made on a loan that they've gotten from someone else. So essentially what's going on is that if, if let's say, you're, you're Bank of America, and I'm not saying Bank of America is very exposed to the European crisis, well, not as badly as Deutsche Bank or Credit Suisse Bank, but let's just assume you're Bank of America, and you have a $500 billion bond portfolio, okay? And let's assume that we are going to allow a government to default on approximately three to four trillion dollars in debt. Well, what happens to the bondholders? Well, typically you'd say, well, these guys would probably get a portion of the government's assets. The only problem is that there's no government on earth that has that has any significant amount of collateral attached to how much money they borrow. They really don't. They spend a vast majority of it on employees. So, essentially, these bondholders are going to lose 80, perhaps somewhere around 80 to 70 percent of whatever they lent to these governments. Now, let's assume that these banks invested a hundred, or let's just assume back to our original example, that Bank of America borrowed or lent out a hundred billion other dollars that they borrowed five hundred billion dollars from different clients. Essentially, essentially we're saying that Bank of America lost ten billion or maybe even if, well, if, if Europe were to default and they were to lose everything on the bond position, chances are maybe even 90% with perhaps 10% of it being collateralized, uh, we could assume that Bank of America would lose 90 to $80 billion lending money to perhaps Greece or Ireland, uh, the weaker periphery states. Now, if that were to happen, where would Bank of America get the money to borrow, where, where would Bank of America get money to pay back the depositors if in the case they had a bank run? Uh, they would have to borrow from the central banks. And that's essentially what the central banks have come out to do. They're giving extra capital to banks at a very low interest rate. They're not necessarily giving money to them, they're giving out loans so that they can pay off another loan with a different loan. Basically a refinancing structure. Now, what kind of message are these central banks giving the world? Essentially, and here's what I'm thinking, essentially, <clears throat> judging by how these central banks are acting, they're anticipating the worst case scenario. Essentially, they're preparing themselves for a, 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 a European default somewhere down the road. And by 
by by <coughs> establishing, and what I mean by by establishing that they're going to lend money to banks, even if their bond portfolios are severely damaged, means that we're going to make it so that you can pay back your depositors. We're going to make sure that your bank won't have to close. We're going <clears> to <throat> ensure that much. But you're still going to lose money on your balance sheet. You're going to lose money, essentially, is what they're saying. You're going to lose money, but <clears throat> we're going to make your money, your losses a little easier on you by making it so that even though you lose a substantial amount of money on your European bonds, you still have a place to borrow money to pay off the debts you already have as banks. Because banks borrow money. And believe it or not, banks are the biggest borrowers of money. They borrow money from citizens like you and I because we deposit money in the banks. And banks have to honor certain obligations like us withdrawing money from the bank. And for banks to honor that obligation, if in the case banks were to default or for if in the case governments were to default, they would need to borrow money from some source so that they can pay us, pay us the money that we deposited in their bank. So that's the whole issue that's going on right now. Now let's get back to actual technical analysis and actually analyze these markets. First of all, my outlook was kind of surprised. I was kind of surprised markets were able to stage such a rally. Um, and, and, and I think markets are due for a pullback because of this really, really strong move on the dollar index. Now why is there such a strong move on the dollar index? The Euro US dollar pullback. Now let's observe the daily chart very closely. <clears throat> Your US dollar is pulling back like I anticipated on my Wednesday video at the 20 day moving average. On my Wednesday video, I also anticipated the dollar index to rally right off that 20 day moving average um, because it's a support area. Moving averages are your best support resistance areas, or one of the best. So, dollar index gets support from the, U, from the 20 day moving average. And essentially, the Dow Jones Industrial Average hasn't reacted by it, to it that much. But we're still in a Friday session. And when you trade Fridays, one thing you need to realize is, if the week has been a very positive week, you have to, you, typically what happens is that a lot of people close their positions for a gain. Now, if the whole week was negative, then they typically close all their shorts for a gain. So right now I'm anticipating a close of positions and I'm thinking, I'm thinking that we're going to have a lot of selling into the closing session so, or into the close of the session. So now we know where the dollar stands and the euro. Euro is pulling back to the dollar. Therefore the dollar is having a nice little bounce. This coincides with the 20 day moving average pulling back. So the 20 day moving average pulls back. The euro pulls back from that 20 day moving average and the dollar index is pushing itself right off of that 20 day moving average. See that synchronicity? Well not really synchronicity, but don't, don't you see how these two, two, these two patterns work in opposite of each other? Right here and right here? That's because the Euro US dollar is weighted 50% of the dollar index basket. So when you see a pullback on the Euro US dollar, you can anticipate a rally in the US dollar index. When you see a rally in the US dollar index, you can anticipate a pullback in the Dow component. And, and, and that's basically because markets like to move inverse to each other, especially these markets, because they're all tied very closely towards one another. Gold and silver. Silver and gold should have a decent pullback. And um, the, the main reason is they kind of got above that moving average, but I wouldn't be surprised if it closed right below that 20-day moving average by the end of this trading session, mainly because of the really strong pullback we're having in the Euro US dollar currently and the nice rally we're having off the 20-day moving average on the US dollar index. Moving on, the Euro Japanese yen is selling off again. It's touching that 20 day moving average. It's kind of struggling with it, but I do anticipate a close below it, mainly because European banks are still trying to weaken, they're trying to cut out their weakening positions. They're trying to get rid of those uh, Italian, the, the Italian debt. What they're essentially trying to do is secure safety from themselves. When markets are good or bad, it doesn't matter. When it gets bad, they do it faster. Um, when it's kind of good, they kind of cut back <coughs> their weaker bonds the ones that are furthest from maturity because the ones that are furthest from maturity are the ones they anticipate 
will lose the most amount of money because they're anticipating that these governments may not be able to pay back their debt and the ones that are really close to maturity they're going to hold on to so oh and i'm sorry for revealing this your whole entire strategy i guess it was a mystery for the whole world uh, for all of you banks out there in europe but that's essentially what's going on the ones that are short to maturity are the ones that are going to be held on to because they anticipate the european governments to pay them back at least over the short term but the ones that are further out 10 years down the road in maturity they're going to sell those first and that's what's essentially happening. And once they sell those bond positions, they're going to flee into, Jap into the Japanese bond market by converting their euros into the Japanese yen. And then they're going to buy Japanese treasury bonds that are short term or maybe even longer term, 10 years. Okay. And finally, the financial direction, daily financial bulls. Now, this is why, the you know, everything I talked about earlier about how the banks are getting their assets balanced, a balance sheet is bolstered a little bit. They're not getting bolstered. They just found another place so that they can borrow money in the case of a worst case scenario. It doesn't mean banks won't lose money. It's just that if in the case they lose money, they have a place where they can borrow money and turn around and pay off their current obligations. Hope that explains everything that's going on right now. Take care, folks. And you guys have a wonderful trading session. Bye.